Hello everybody, welcome back to my Gregorious Maths video. In this video, we'll be looking at the characteristic of a field. Um, so yeah, so to start off with, we'll just be taking a look at the map, I'll call it alpha, which takes in an integer and outputs an element of an arbitrary field f. And what it does is it sends n to n times the identity on f, or 1f plus da -da -da -da, up until 1 n times. So there's two cases here. So we're going to study the kernel of this map. And there's two cases to consider, when it is 0 and when it's not 0. So let's look at the slightly more easy case. So this is when the kernel is 0. So the kernel of alpha equals 0. So what does this imply? This implies that, um, oh yeah, this implies that n times 1f equals 0 implies n equals 0 uh, in, z in the integers. So that is, um, well, yeah, this, this implies that n times 1f is so 1f plus da -da -da is 0 only when you do this 0 times. All right, and what, what happens here? This means that, actually I think you can stick an if and only if sign here. So what happens is um, non-zero, in, so invertible elements, non-zero elements map to non-zero elements. And so this, this map right here induces an inclusion, so induces an inclusion um, from the rational integers to f, uh, which sends m over n to m times the identity on f, and then n times the identity on f inverse. And f, oh, massive voice crack there. <laughs> f contains a copy of the rationals and it has characteristic zero. All right, so now let's look at the second case where the kernel of this map is not zero. So case two, basically. And things get a little bit more interesting when this happens. So kernel of alpha is not equal to zero. So actually this implies that the kernel of alpha is a prime and this is because if it weren't, then there would be two non-zero elements of a field F whose product is zero, and that's not possible, which you can easily prove. Um, in fact, I'll just prove right now. So if AG, uh, yeah, let's just say, let's just say, AG equals zero, then this implies that AG equals AG minus AG, which implies that a g equals a times g minus g, which implies that g equals g minus g equals zero. And similarly, you can show that a equals zero. So one of these must be zero. And if this were not a prime, then there would be two non-zero elements multiplying together to be a prime. So it has to be a prime. Um, so, all right, so we have the kernel of alpha is a prime. And now, a consequence of this is actually that in f, a plus b, sorry, not a plus b, a plus b to the power of p is equal to a to the p plus b to the p. And we wish this was all, this was true for all real numbers, but unfortunately this is only for a uh, field with characteristic p. And this is because, let me just do a little proof, a plus b to the p is equal to the sum from i equals 0 to p of a to the p 
P minus I times P choose I times B to the I. And so the point is that P divides this, so, and uh, P divides, um, P choose I, whenever um, 0 is less than I is less than P. And so all of these elements right here, all of these elements, so basically we're only going to have the 0 and the Pth element staying, because all of these elements in between are just going to be 0, because if it's a multiple of P, it's just going to be 0 times something, which is always going to be 0. And so this equals... So the only terms will survive are the ones where um, this is uh, this is one basically, and that is the first and the last term. So it's going to be a to the p plus um, b to the p. Now another interesting thing is that alpha defines. A, an isomorphism an isomorphism um, between from um, from the from the integers mod p to the subring of f Uh, so the set of all m times 1 f such that m is an integer. Alright. And uh, the last thing we'll look at is the Frobenius endomorphism. So this is the map which takes in an element of r and outputs r. When it does it, it sends alpha to alpha to the p. And an interesting thing about this is when you consider n copies, when we consider n copies of the, I'm not going to bother spelling it, so I'm just going to call it the Fe, the Frobenius endomorphism, we get a map from R to R which now sends alpha to alpha to the p to the n. And now a1 plus up until a m to the alpha to the p to the n is equal to a1 to the alpha to the p to the n plus up until a m alpha to the p to the n. Alright, so that's everything for this video. I think it was a relatively short video. Um, next time, I, I mean, I, I think I'm just going to be leaning a little bit towards algebra and number theory for the uh, next few weeks, maybe, I think. So next time I'll be doing something in number theory, or I'll be doing a review of polynomial rings, because I kind of want to build up this abstract algebra series to the more advanced, to the more cool stuff, in my opinion. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. See you next time. Goodbye.